Welcome back guys. In this video, I'm going to be testing what's the best budget deadening material. Now I say sound deadening really to cover both methods of sound reduction. First, let me take a step back. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've been trying to improve both audio and visual aspects of my videos. And one thing that's still bothering me is the echo in my room which I'm sure you can hear right now through whatever method I use. So I started researching and I found some cheap things to improve the sound quality. Um, I do know that acoustic foam is what professionals use, but I wanted to do something cheaper, but still does just as good a job. That's when I came across this video. The video is by DIY Perks, and basically he tests a few different materials with a speaker and a decibel reader. But with further research and a little help from some of the commenters down below on that video, he's only testing one type of sound reduction. The video is great, but the way he tests the material in the middle and a speaker on one side and a decibel reader on the other side. What he's really testing is soundproofing. I mean, this is great if you want to reduce the amount of noise that is penetrating through whatever material that is, like a quiet room. However, if you're wanting to improve the sound quality, if you're making videos or music like I'm doing, you need to have sound dampening or absorption. Basically what that means is when a sound wave hits the surface, it dissipates the wave. So less of that wave can bounce back and create things like an echo. Compared to soundproofing, where you're trying to stop the wave completely. So knowing that, I thought I would make a video showing me testing different materials, both soundproofing characteristics like DIY perks, and also their dampening characteristics. So here are the materials that I have chosen for everyone. First, I'll be using my wall as a control for one test and no material as a control for another test. Next, we have insulation. The same stuff is behind the walls. People have used this in thin boxes and covered the front with a light material to help reduce noise. Next, we have pillows. It's nice, it's squishy, so maybe it'll absorb some sound waves. Next, we have two types of moving blankets. You can get either of these in bulk on Amazon and they cover quite a large area. One is heavier duty quilted type, and the other is a thinner furniture pad. I've also seen people tack these up on their walls to reduce sound. Moving on to towels. This was actually the winner in DIY Perks video test, and it's great for sound proofing, but we're trying for sound absorption. Then we have the standard blanket. This might be easier access if you don't have moving blankets or you can't get them. And last, we have some acoustic foam. Like I said, this is what professionals use in their studios, and you can also find these on Amazon in various colors and thicknesses and styles. Now, I do have two honorable mentions that have potential for being on this video, but ended up being too expensive. Those are memory foam toppers for beds. These are dense and have the same egg crate style as acoustic foams, but they're super expensive, so I didn't include them in this. Then we have carpet pads. This is the padding that goes under the carpet, gives it kind of some squish. I was really thinking about having this in my test, but based on how thin the padding is and the amount that you would need to cover the area with a decent amount of thickness, it ended up being too expensive. Okay, enough talk. Let's get to testing. All right, guys, this is my setup for test number one for soundproofing. Similar to what DIY Perks did, I will be using my phone as a decibel reader. It's going to be here inside my subwoofer box. I got a little stand in there, so it's going to be the same height as the speaker. Uh, that one's hooked up to my computer down there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting material over the opening of the subwoofer and just seeing how well the sound waves can penetrate that material to get to the decibel reader. And since I still have some left over, I'm gonna be using some bubble wrap just to see how well it does, just cause I have it, why not? Bubble wrap's super cheap. 
For these tests, I use a tone generator at eight different tones. 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 12,800 hertz. For the second test, I'm going to have the speaker right in the middle so it travels the same distance for the microphone. It's going to be bouncing off the wall and to my phone, which is going to be in here. Same thing on the stand, same position, but this time the speaker is going to be facing the wall. I'm going to try to have the sound wave bounce off that and come into here where the phone is at and then placing, of course, the different materials in the way. Okay, before I get into the results, no, I'm not a professional. Yes, this was done in my house and I am aware that it was not a perfect test. Also, when looking over the graph, know that human voices will range between the 100 and the 250 Hertz level. And anything more will be more towards the instrumental side. Okay guys, here's the results. My first graph here shows the soundproofing test with the decibel reading on the y-axis and the hertz on the x-axis. You can see the overall that towel folded into four layers is the clear winner, especially at the higher frequencies. So this would make a lot of sense if you are soundproofing a room for instrumentals. Insulation also does a great job at soundproofing. Moving on to the second test, this one is for sound absorption. Here you can see the human voice levels on the far left side of the graph are pretty close once you get into higher frequencies, things start to change. The acoustic foam does very well with the exception of the 800 Hertz tone where it did terrible. Insulation did well on the high tones but did average with the rest. The pillow surprisingly did well across the board. I would also say the folded moving blanket did a great job across the tone range. So depending on if you're soundproofing or wanting to have sound absorption for either voice work or instrumentals, there's no clear winner. But if you're looking to do soundproofing for either voice work or instrumentals, I would suggest the folded towels. If you're geared more towards soundproofing for vocals, using insulation, folded moving blankets, or folded furniture pads would work well. If you want to soundproof for instrumentals where the tones are higher, the folded towel is the clear winner there. When it comes to sound absorption for vocals, just grab whatever you can to help the acoustics. For instrumentals, the acoustic foam works very well and pillows, folded moving blankets will also get the job done. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes stuff that hasn't happened yet and unreleased content that no one else has seen. And if you haven't already, watch that video. And if you watch that video, watch that video. And if you've watched both of those videos already, make sure you subscribe down here.